Hey guys, so a lot of people were asking me which is my main daily driver phone. So P9 Plus right here is my main uh, phone that I use, that I have my main SIM card inside of it. And I've been using it for like two weeks and three weeks now, two weeks plus time. And now I am going to do a full review and talk about my experience with this phone. So I know a lot of people wanted to see this video. It's a little bit late, but anyways, uh, let's get started. So first of all, if you talk about the price, this phone cost around $600, which is around like 61, 62,000 PKR here in Pakistan. So yeah, it's a pretty expensive phone. It's a flagship phone. It's like the best phone from Huawei at the moment, you know, um, so at least uh, specs wise overall. Uh, so if we talk about the build quality, okay, so in $600, you're getting a top notch um, product, okay, it's uh, it's really premium, it's really shiny, and it feels really great in hand in shot. So it got aluminum body, full aluminum body, so, and has a really polished finish, so it feels great in hand, uh, and I don't have to worry about fingerprints or anything like that. It's uh, proof, it's fingerprint proof, you can say, and uh, I have to say it's it's pretty nice. And the buttons are also uh, pretty compact, like the HTC 10. So uh, really feels like a quality device here from Huawei, I have to say. So it's a big phone in terms of size. Obviously, P9 Plus uh, Plus means big size, 5.5 inch display. Uh, that's also a kind of a main reason for me to use this as a, as a main phone because I like big screen phones. Um, so you can see here that we do have an uh, IR blaster on the top of this phone, which I remember, if, I, if I'm not wrong, the P9 doesn't have this, okay? So IR blaster is a great thing. They have this their own app. You can control like ton of devices, uh, air conditioners, projectors, and stuff like that. And I've tested it out. It's really reliable and works really fine. So I have to say that's a nice thing that Huawei has it here, IR blaster. And uh, on the bottom, it does have USB Type-C, just like the Huawei P9. So uh, you also get the uh, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack down there. Uh, you also have the uh, speaker grill. Uh, and it's a, it's a kind of a stereo uh, speaker system on this phone. You know, when you play a sound, you can hear the sound a little bit coming out of uh, the, the front port here. So it's it is actually a little bit of stereo speaker system. This this was not a, the case with the P9 Lite, but I don't know with the P9 Plus. I felt that the sound it has this sound coming from both ports. So um, yeah, you can. But it's it's not something that like the HTC 10, which has a you know woofer down there, uh, down at the bottom. So a little bit of stereo sound system there on this phone, and uh, yeah, on the sides you get the power button, volume rocker. Same construction at the as the P9 and the P9 Lite. You got your tray there for the SIM card and the micro SD card. Uh, moving on to the display, like I said, 5.5 inch display, 1080p HD. Uh, so I honestly thought that they should have uh, Quad HD with their P9 Plus. You know, um, it's kind of a disappointing thing because LG has a Quad HD phone, HTC has a Quad, a quad HD phone, Samsung has a Quad HD phone, but Huawei. Uh, we're still waiting. It's 2016 and no Quad HD phone from them apart from the Nexus 6P, of course. But uh, I'm talking about their original phone, you know, uh, so their exclusive phone. So no uh, Quad HD, it's just 1080p. And uh, it's not the most beautiful display, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's bright. And uh, one thing I've noticed that it's not that much bright outdoor. Uh, like the P9, you know, maybe because of the bigger screen size, I don't know, but uh, felt a little bit uncomfortable in, a, in an outdoor situation, you know, outdoor visibility wise. So I really hope that uh, the display can get better in, the, in their upcoming flagship phone. So, um, but it's a big phone, big device for those people who want to uh, watch YouTube videos like I watch. So, I mean, you're going to enjoy uh, the media content on this big screen. Uh, also, the uh, it is running Android 6.0.1 Marshmallow, which is the latest version of the Android. So, you can see, pretty nice. So, this is, of course, Huawei's own skin. And uh, they have their own customization. You got a bunch of different home screens. There's no actual app drawer thing here it's like uh, you know they want to make things more easier for their uh, users so you get this tricks like uh, knock to capture the screenshot like this and uh, yeah I mean I'm gonna be making a separate video for the tips and tricks really soon so this is how the lock screen looks like 
and you also get like a control center thing in the lock screen where you can um, have the flash and camera other stuff uh, you can quickly access to that so um, I mean the software is pretty similar to other you know the, the P9 and the P9 Lite uh, except for some few additions there here and there uh, but the big thing about this phone is that it actually has a force touch technology uh, like the iPhone 6s so I'm going to be comparing it to the iPhone 6s side by side but right now I'm going to show you guys uh, the, the thing here uh, the force touch thing here how it works so just like on the iPhone you have to press um, the icon like with the force and it's going to give you some options okay so let me just lower down the brightness and show you guys here the updater sound display and Wi-Fi same thing it works with the camera you can quickly take selfie video and you can also go into the pro camera where you have all the you know options to uh, change ISO and white balance stuff like that so uh, this force touch thing only works with the stock launcher okay so if you plan to you plan on using the the Google now launcher or NOAA launcher it's not gonna work it's also restricted to just system based applications so you're not gonna be able to use it with Instagram okay which kind of sucks because I think Huawei is like currently testing this feature out maybe in the future they're gonna have third-party developers working on it uh, but uh, believe it or not Huawei was the first company to introduce this Forster thing uh, back in the uh, in their Mate S128 gigabyte variant and I know Apple that came on later but believe it or not they have the best implementation with 3D touch and the widgets and stuff like that and the third-party sport they're, they're going in the right direction so really want Huawei to step up their game at least with the with the Android department you know forces technology because they were the first one to introduce this so like I said it works with the stock based application and no support for third party applications so so apart from the bigger display and the bigger battery uh, the the four star technology and the and the IR blaster are the new addition here on the P9 plus compared to the uh, Huawei P9 so under the hood we got Kirin 955 plus 4 gigs of RAM so it's a pretty fast phone I, I gotta say and uh, you can see the amount of RAM uh, in the multitasking area so uh, this thing just flies through everything gaming benchmarks it's just everything is just so smooth and 1080p display it's not that demanding compared to the quad hd displays on other phones so definitely it's kind of a future proof phone you know as far as the lag is concerned and uh, also if we talk about the benchmark scores i don't normally talk about benchmarks because i do real life speed tests uh, but this is the score that I have received on this phone. So uh, 1,844 uh, single core and uh, 6,620 uh, multi cores. I believe this is actually the the most highest score that I've ever got on any of my phone. Uh, pretty insane, actually. Uh, 6,620 is actually pretty close to 7,000. I don't know if any phone at the moment can score up to that level, but this is this shows that this phone is definitely. Uh, pretty powerful. Huawei is offering 3,400 millibar battery with this phone so 6 hours and 53 minutes and 13 seconds is the screen on time that I got and on average you can expect in between 5 to 6 hours of uh, screen on time if you play games okay this is without games and if you're someone who don't play the games that much like me on phones then this phone will give you a, a really nice battery life for about uh, one and a half day so or, or maybe almost two days if you use the power saving feature so so I have to say it's uh, pretty damn good when it comes to battery life uh, is it better than uh, Huawei Mate 8 I guess it's actually pretty on par because the Mate 8 has a 6 inch display with 4000 mAh battery and this one has a 5.5 inch display with 3400 so uh, I mean I have used both phones. Uh, I think both have pretty much the same battery uh, performance for, uh, according to my usage. So uh, yeah, definitely that's a good thing. So fingerprint sensor is also on the back. I forgot to talk about it. So pretty fast. You know, it shows the animation, uh, and uh, and it's most of the time it's pretty accurate. Uh, lastly, if you talk about the cameras, now the cameras on the back are the same as the P9, no difference. So you got the uh, uh, monochrome plus sRGB combination, uh, dual LED flash, laser autofocus, partnership with Leica. So uh, one of the best smartphone cameras at the moment. Uh, the colors are nice. Uh, the only uh, things uh, that I have seen lacking on this phone is a 4K video recording. You can't record 4K on this phone which is uh, a shame because
because uh, Samsung's offering 4K recording uh, since the Galaxy S5 days. Also, I've noticed that the autofocus is not that fast when you're recording videos. You know, it takes some time to focus on certain objects. On the front, you got 8 megapixel uh, with f1.9 aperture size. Believe it or not, it's like one of the best selfie phones on the market. I mean, the, the selfies, the exposure, the way it, it captures light, it's just amazing. You can even get uh, some pretty nice low-light selfies out of this phone. And there's also a front, uh, front screen flash feature where it uh, flashes the screen uh, to uh, make the things brighter on the picture. So I'm really impressed by their camera UI. You know, it's, it's a lot different compared to their older UI, which was looking a lot like iOS but it now it's, it seems original I mean you got tons of options here you can even see the uh, the microphone levels by the uh, by switching on the audio control which is great so um, yeah I mean uh, they have done great with the camera but still uh, no 4k video recording no quad AC display but apart from that this phone has pretty much everything that a smartphone a flash smartphone needs so so for six hundred dollars uh, you can buy other devices also like the Galaxy S7 and HTC 10 I mean they also cost around that price point but this phone gives you 64 gigs of internal memory as well as dual sim card support which is great having two sim cards inside is pretty great and that is something of a you know big plus point for this phone so I mean yeah it's a flashy product build quality is, is great uh, display is decent 1080p performance is great battery life is amazing and camera is also pretty great uh, I have to say it, it, this phone has like I said pretty much everything to be uh, your your flagship phone you know your main phone um, also has fast charging support so um, like I said 64 gigs of internal memory is a lot okay so um, yeah, that's uh, pretty much it guys. I've been using this phone as my main phone and I will continue to use it as my main device um, for some time until maybe until the iPhone 7 or the Galaxy Note 6. I don't know, but um, let me know which uh, phones you want to see me to compare it. I, I know some people have requested the comparison with the uh, Galaxy S7, so I'll be making that video pretty soon. Uh, please stay tuned for uh, daily tech videos. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.